Hi. Okay, let's have a look at our, uh, our simple millisecond timer. This is a fully functional millisecond timer, works with switched inputs or light gates, and it's very straightforward to use. Rather than any work on rising signal, work on falling signal, there's none of that. It's just two simple inputs, gate one and gate two. And you can choose whether it starts and stops on gate one, or if it starts on gate one and stops on gate two. That's all you have to do. So let's have a look at it in operation. Just to show you the switched part of it, I'll use a switch. And this is the release unit from our G by Freepal apparatus, which you can see in a different video. But it highlights how easy this is to use. I'm going to set this up so a flick of the switch is going to start my timer. So I simply connect my switch to gate one and ground. And I'm going to have it stop when I release the ball bearing from the release unit here. So I'm going to connect this one to gate two of the timer and ground. Ground, gate two. Now the way this timer works is it reads the inputs to it. When you press reset, it then responds to a change. So once your instruments are set up, you press reset to initiate, uh, to tell the timer you're ready. As soon as I flick this switch on start, it starts timing. As soon as I release the ball, it stops timing. If I just press reset again, now it's re-read this signal and will start when I flick the switch the other way and will stop when I replace the ball bearing. You can connect any make or break switch to these start and stop inputs. As long as you press reset, it'll read the inputs as you set them and will respond to a change. Additionally, this is designed to work perfectly with our timer light gates and they require no extra power. They plug directly into the front panel and we'll go through how that works now. Okay, so we've got one light gate set up here at the top of the ramp our second light gate set up here, sort of halfway down. And in order to, to calculate the acceleration of our dynamics trolley, we're going to need three measurements. We're going to need its speed at the top of the ramp, its speed at the bottom of the ramp, and the time taken to travel from this first measurement to this second measurement. And we're going to do that in three separate runs to try and, uh, try and make sure we release our trolley at the same rate each time. I've just got its rear wheel just hanging over the edge here, and I'll just ease it onto the ramp and allow it to roll. So, to calculate speed at the top here, we need to know distance and time, and use the equation speed is distance over time to work out speed. Our interrupt card here has a width, that's our distance, so if we can measure the time it takes to travel through this light gate, we can calculate its speed at the top. So we're gonna to wanna to use just this light gate first, we'll plug that into the timer, and we want it to start and stop on gate one. So that is mode two. We press reset again, so it, uh, it takes in its readings, and we're ready to start. Ease it off the ramp. Good. And there's our time taken for this interrupt card to pass through the top gate. 0 0.045 seconds. If we know the width of this, we can calculate the speed at the top. We do the same again for the bottom, so we'll disconnect this light gate and connect this one. Reset the timer again and do run two. Line it up nicely. And there we go, 0 0.027 seconds, slightly less, as we'd expect. It's accelerated down the ramp. So we now can calculate both of our speeds. We now simply need the time taken to go from here to here. So in this instance, this one's going to start the timer, this one's going to stop the timer. So we'll plug light gate 1 into gate 1, light gate 2 into gate 2. And we want it set in mode 1, which is gate 1 start, gate 2 stop, reset, and away we go. Excellent. 0.729 seconds. We have two speeds, one at the top, one at the bottom. We have a time taken, we can calculate acceleration for our dynamics trolley down our ramp. 
As you can see, there are no extra power supplies required for the light gates. They derive their power directly from the timer. All you need is the 5 volt regulated plug top supply that comes with your timer. Everything else, nice and neat on the bench. Thanks for watching.